morning good evening to everyone today is a wonderful session that is approach to avionics a lecture by mr ars patel shapers and avionics head at star he was also involved in design and development of high powered rocket cansat and rocket motor static test pad first of all i would like to welcome mr ars patel and we are thankful to them for accepting this event and also welcome the all participate participation now i will give the session to mr hospital hospital okay ah thank you so much arvin i am audible right ah yes audible okay thank you so much for this welcome and thank you so much wings of aero for letting me use your platform and spread some of my knowledge with all the students so now i'll start with the presentation i have one screen to share i'll just share it so the screen is visible to all of you and yes. great so thank you so much everyone for joining and now we can start with the session so basically in this session now we'll be talking about basic avionics especially for the students who are very much new to this background to this domain and basically here i really want to welcome you all to the session on basics of avionics and let's move ahead so the first thing that we have is what is avionics so the first question a very basic question over which this whole session depends upon so basically all of you must be thinking about uh, avionics is simply uh, electronics which is into aviation very much true what is avionics simply something that is kept in spacecraft that we see in rockets that we see in planes and drones all those things comes under avionics so what is avionics it is simply a small branch of avionics like uh, electronics electronics is a very broad topic in which avionics is one of the topics still avionics is itself a very broad topic in which you have these drones rockets then satellites then each and everything which are, which is airborne can be said to be uh, under avionics okay and basically this like the people who are from electronics background they can relate much much to this but still we'll make things clear for the students who are not from the electronics background too first thing what is the major difference between avionics and electronics so basically the major difference between electronics and avionics as i told you earlier that is electronics is itself a very broad topic in which we have a lot many things included whereas avionics is something which is which could we could call it related to aviation and space so ahead we have few of the topics over which uh, i can explain you the difference as well as like if someone wants to start or wants to know more about avionics they can get to know what exactly avionics is so let's see to the things that we need to consider in avionics first thing is the high g force for any normal electronic component as we all know are a stable component like our phone like our mixer grinders or or any of the electronic item that we have at our home so basically all those electronic item are just something which are which are kept at one place and they are used 
or even if they are moving so they still don't go through a high g force whereas in avionics like uh, let's take a plane let's take a rocket even a model rocket it it definitely goes through high g force okay so basically we need components or we need the uh, electronics part which can easily suffer this much high amount of g force so basically what is g force first of all though for those who don't know so basically we we all know a simple gravity which pulls us down so whenever our rocket or our aircraft is moving moving up in the upward direction or in the direction anywhere uh, opposite to, to to the gravitational force at that time a high gravitational force is been exerted on that whole object and due to that like there could be many chemical change many mechanical change or deformation that could happen so we need components and the whole avionics system to be uh, made of in a such a way that it could easily handle a high g force so basically this was about the g force and uh, in this like whenever we go through a data sheet of any of the component of a particular ele electronic uh, device will like they always mention like around how much g force like in the data sheet basically we have each and every uh, thing covered up like what all characteristics specs and features a device has and in that same thing you will even find how much g force a component can handle so basically like like in any data sheet just go through it once you will get to know how much g force it can handle like in in a simple a simple batteries cannot be used in rockets whereas a, a lithium ion battery can be used why because uh, in in these in few of the batteries there are liquid inside it like and if there is a liquid liquid is a moving object and due to this high g force that liquid uh, like tends to shift that's why it cannot be used even in rockets you all must have seen that never a mechanical component is never preferred still there are a mechanism of like well designed mechanisms are there but like a small component small screws and bolts are not used because wherever there is a component which which tends to move or which can move the high g, high g force can definitely affect those kind of components so first is this thing that separates a basic electronic uh, component to and a space graded or what we call as an, an avionics component is the size mass placement uh, and placement of a component okay in here basically by the uh, like by component what i mean is the basic electronic component because avionics is indirectly means that same thing so in this size mass and placement so in in rocket spacecraft you all must have seen that like if we cannot use the basic comp component or the general components which are available in the market because first of all we have a size constraint as and uh, the especially we have the mass constraint because the payload capacity of any of the spacecraft or aircraft is always said to be less like and uh, whenever an avionics or electronics is kept into any of such spacecraft or aircraft it is it should have the least mass as much as possible and basically let's uh, think about the size so we have like in the next slide i will be uh, talking about the basic uh, basic size and then another important thing is the placement so in rockets uh, we like like just basically think of a rocket in which there are temperature sensors there are gyroscopes there are accelerometers and various sensors are attached so all those sensors cannot be just directly attached on the circuit itself those components require a proper placement on the maybe outer body of the rocket or some at some uh, proper location of the rocket and uh, the same thing even goes with the gyroscope like gyroscope cannot be attached anywhere it is attached at, at a proper place like because wherever the gyroscope it, uh, is attached like the uh, to calculate the angular momentum and the change in the orientation it is very much important like to calculate the moment of inertia of rocket and each and everything so for that the component placement is one of the most important part in 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 the avionics and then there are even components uh, parts like the rocket liquid engine or the basic rocket engine near which the temperature sensors are attached 
or if if there is a thrust vector control rocket then there are uh, other many like many other components are connected electronics component are connected so it should be heat resistant then it should be uh, such a robust component that it could be easily placed at such places and next we'll talk about the types of component so head as we talk i was telling about the various size of component so here you can see a small chip so this this is a basically an ic and the same ic comes in many different packages the one is the simple through hole package and that through hole package is basically the one which we find in our in our daily market the the one which looks like an insect that people call which has many legs on both of their side so basically that is known as a through hole package and the one which you can see in the photo behind here that is a smd component that is surface mount device okay and even in these surface mount device there are uh, many other type of uh, packages also available bga kind of packages are available which don't even like where you cannot see the lines you way in such case you cannot see lines like these like these lines cannot are not even visible they have the connection below the ic's they have circular connection below the ic's and in like in the same way there are many such components uh, and there are various packages of a single component like if you are searching for a transistor you can find that same transistor in many multiple packages and now you have to decide according to your size your uh, weight constraint your mass constraint and like how much dimension you can fit it into and how much g force your vehicle will be going so according to that like you have to select your correct package for your uh, avionics so basically this was about the size and the uh, various packages in which an electric electronic components are available then there are uh, by even in various types uh, we can also include things like there are uh, a same transistor could be a transistor which can be easily used in our earth atmosphere and one transistor and the same transistor could also be like it cannot directly be used in space because in space we have many other components which will be surely be affecting it so there are uh, radiation hardened components or we we can also like basically radiation hardening is a lead and gold coating over the uh, electronic components and that is very much required because of the high radiation it is required such components are also known as space graded components if you just search for space graded components you will get get a list of all such components like a same space graded component will be like very much costly and in the same uh, component you can even find on uh, like which can work in simple earth atmosphere you will find it for a very cheap rate okay so basically this is uh, one of the important thing if someone is actually uh, uh, trying to go for uh, like a proper space mission or at least something that could go up to the kalman line then they need to take care of uh, like to use a uh, space grade components after some uh, height limit okay and uh, for now like ahead what what used to happen is like in the upcoming slides we, i have also kept few photos of the space rated on board computers for rockets how they look like how the uh, lead and gold coating is given to it we have a photo ahead but then uh, into it like until now like it was like a normal pcb could be built a normal uh, printed circuit board could be built and it could be kept in a in a radiation hardening box itself and that same thing could work the like it it could work totally fine but now uh, as the technology is uh, going more advanced now so the chips which are made those chips itself have the radiation hardening elements inside it so they don't even require external protection to now so this is the main thing and then uh, let's talk about where the uh, radiation affects where do the radiation exactly affects so this is an ic do the radiation affects this or do the radiation affect the wire connection which are done here here you can see these wire connections do the radiation where does it affects so basically your uh, radiation in space does not like will not affect the wire connections but it will surely affect the transistors or the ic's 
which have some electrons moving inside and which has some pro uh, specific properties like each and every transistors like basically electronics whole electronics have started since the the transistor was built what happens in a transistor simply we have the pn junction and according to the various characteristics the according to the chemical it has uh, out, out of which it is made of the whole characteristics depends on it and when radiation hits it at that time there are chances that your transistors may malfunction okay so if you have a binary data that, that is 0101 is going on instead of that it will be 1111 it there is possibility that like there could be variation in two or three bits and just because of the variation in these few bits your whole mission can be scrapped off okay so that's the importance of using a space related component or basically radiation hardening so this was it about this topic that is types of electronic component that could be used so basically now we are going through an uh, overview of of everything by which a basic uh, a person who is not from electronics background can also get an idea about this now we'll go to the next slide that is the communication system so basically when we talk about the avionics the major role is about the communication because whatever things we are doing we are doing to get some data or we have some requirement to know uh, we have a curiosity to know something like what is in space or wherever our our satellite or our avionics uh, system is going like we need some data from that place <clears throat> so communication plays the very much important role in this so in this in the communication system uh, the here you can see and the background we have a ground station also in simple language you can also call it as a receiver which is which has a main purpose of re receiving data but not only these this like now we have the transceivers module transceiver modules are attached so even in the satellites which are up in the space they have transceiver modules so those transceiver modules they have capability of transmitting the data as well as receiving the data so both things can be done by a satellite itself and even by the ground station so uh, there are no requirements of using separate antennas but still there is a lot much issues which uh, plays a major role in communication system that is we call as noise and that noise is due to the atmosphere that we have okay we have many layers of atmosphere with us because of which until this signal reaches to us it it, it goes through a lot of uh, noise and the signal actually gets a lot like if you go for the signal to noise ratio it actually reduces a lot and basically the major issue which occurs is in the ionosphere here when there is an in the ionosphere we we face the major issues because of which the maximum amount of noise uh, is attenuated in our signals and okay so one question for everyone that is like in the daytime or uh, in the daytime the speed uh, like let's take the internet speed is is x okay and in the night time the speed increases okay so if your speed is uh, 100 100 uh, uh, 100 gb 100 mbps is your speed for now in the day time so uh, and the at night the speed will be around 200 mbps or let's say but okay this will be a wrong example for you because it depends on the which kind of connection or the broadband connection you take but basically just think that uh, in day time your connection is faster okay your internet uh, like is is good but at night it's better okay why it's better at night okay so don't say that people sleep and there are less users no but uh, like instead of that like at night there are more users as well because people are free and they they surf through they like basically just go through their youtube facebook instagram everything is going on at night itself so even at night your uh, like the the users are are not like decreases a lot still but there is uh, like increase in the speed the reason is the ionosphere in the day time due to the sunlight the ionosphere is said to be charged because of the sunlight all the ions in this ionosphere remains charged 
so what will happen is basically like there will be more attenuation because of these charged ions whereas at night there is no sunlight and there is uh, not much charge in these uh, in the ionosphere and hence we get more speed we, like we can have more speed at night so this was one thing like many people have this myth in their mind so just just if if this is new for someone this is just a basic clarification and uh, yeah this was about the communication system this topic itself is a very very deep topic in which it includes things from antenna designing to various algorithms which are very much useful for reducing this noise and these various delays so like we all know that like we have we have we use gps okay and now we even have navic which isro has uh, launched like using the rnss okay so when rnss was being built as much as i have heard so it was given the like it is something that uh, like all the colleges were given given the rnss modules not all the colleges few colleges uh, who have the uh, professors who are working on on these kind of technologies they were given and at that time the gps was in our phones but still uh, this navic was under development and it was it was around a router size kind of uh, kind of thing which was being used so at that time what what was uh, like uh, happening is like uh, the isro was into the process of of decreasing the noise and now like now the navic like since i guess a year has been gone like since navic has been came in few of the phones as well like isro has done some collaboration with uh, the qualcomm and all and they they will they are making the chips itself for the navic so now it is said to be better than gps i guess gps has the resolution around few meters and our navic will have the resolution of few centimeters so that's comparatively a great work by india so basically like all these things comes under communication system so this was just a basic overview on it let's go to the next slide that is safety system so in in avionics it differs a lot from the uh, basic uh, electronics so in this the safety system are very much important many a time we have uh, a human human crew inside our uh, vehicle so at such moment uh, the safety can can like is one of the most important thing so so there are like in the avionics so, uh, any system that that is kept are said to be the most safest uh, system like in like a basic example that we hear in our daily life that is the number of car accidents are more than the number of uh, accident that happened due to the airplanes or in airplanes why because in airplanes the components are made in such a way that that it, it they have taken care of the whole safety thing and in the next slide we have the redundancy system which is basically where we have multiple computers or multiple by by using multiple components we can uh, assure that if one breaks down or one doesn't works well the other can take over okay so there is this redundancy system is very much important which comes under the safety is one of the safety systems in the avionics and at basic level the safety system what we call like in a simple high powered rockets or in the drones everyone have have like have the safety system like in even in drones if the drone goes away at like far away then it it will uh, definitely it will easily come back to the location of the uh, wherever the remote is or if if the drone senses something nearby it will stop at that moment so what is this this is basically a safety system which is a uh, safety for the drone itself and even for the humans around and then we have like for the rocket let's take basically for the rockets so there are many times that due to some aerodynamic issues the your rocket may not go on the uh, like predefined trajectory there are chances that it can go in the wrong directions and so we need a proper safety systems which can either do the ab uh, abort the whole mission or correct like whatever has been gone wrong okay so until now like even in the uh, basic uh, you all must have seen in the rockets and basic launches like what happens is even there is a, a small error 
which which could uh, like become like a major issue ahead is simply about the whole mission if your rocket tilts more more than some angle and uh, it know the rocket knows that it cannot uh, like correct itself then they will simply abort the whole mission at that time itself so basically this was about the safety system then as we were talking about the redundancy system so in rockets like uh, uh, there are multiple sensors so if rocket just want to measure the orientation of itself they they will simply use a gyroscope but they will not use a single gyroscope there will be multiple gyroscope which will be providing data and from all of those multiple gyroscopes what will be happening is there is a selection system in uh, and there are various filters are also available even online you can find it out that how this redundancy system works and how the system choose the correct values okay like there are we we are like always there are odd number like redundancy system always supports odd number of components that is let's take three gyroscopes are working okay if one gyroscope doesn't provides the correct data the the data will be like uh, what will have simply happen is that if there are three gyroscope the data is being like either maybe they will be averaging the data or there will be the, there is like probability and statistics okay so for the engineering students who are still doing their engineering so just one suggestion that probability and statistics you need to like learn it properly like in call in my college time i have seen that it was there but i i took it very much lightly but it is very much important in this uh, basically the redundancy system the filters and even in the ai and everything it is very much useful the probability and statistics so even in the redundancy system the same thing goes like how to select the correct one which has the probability to be the correct value so all this comes under it and the same here in the image itself you can see so basically like there are same components which are like in multiple numbers here that you can see so uh, in even in the one there is one video of spacex in which they have shown that uh, how they use uh, the redundancy system to correct the error like due to the radiation even they have the issues of the bit flip that we call okay where a bit flips and the whole data changes and because of that like a uh, one computer will 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 give you the wrong data but the other computers will give you the correct data and it will be solved and your rocket will still go in the correct direction and will like go for like whatever mission it's going everything will go very very much correct so this was about the redundancy system then comes the power system so in this uh, in the avionics power system plays a major role because in simple electronics we have a cable that we can connect directly to to our uh, ports at the ground but in avionics we don't have any such options because in avionics like first of all the weight constraints like it makes things really hard for the avionics engineer to select which power system to use basically a, a battery is used okay and the battery we need to take care about is like uh, now like now with the advanced technologies there are good good batteries which are available the lithium ion and lithium polymer batteries are majorly into use especially the lithium polymer battery so there is even one uh, company who is like totally like there are many companies now who are totally using only and only the batteries because until now what was happening is like since since many years the like the use of batteries was only up to the uh, like for the circuits itself in rockets i'm talking about the rockets but like what was happening is like uh, basically we all know that in our uh, vehicle that is our car and bike we we have a system in which like when we turn on our car or bike only at that time the headlights will turn on why is this happening because it is using the same fuel to to like uh, turn the uh, dynamo inside it and generate the electricity okay so that's how basically it generates the electricity from the fuel itself and it is produce it is given to us and the same thing was being happening in the rockets as well there were turbo pumps like from the turbo pumps itself the rocket was like uh, like it could generate electricity and uh, like a basic electricity like just for the uh, high, high usage of the motors but uh, like in that time 
it was something like the pumps were uh, were run were running with the help of fuel but now those same turbo pumps have been like uh, will be running using the electron electric motors okay so basically this ele electric pumps so they require a lot high amount of uh, battery so and these high amount of batteries are not easily available so such batteries like we need to manufacture it separately okay so like on internet as much as uh, like i have researched upon so there are no such batteries directly available so even in batteries there is a lot many things a uh, simple thing that we see in our uh, for the power bank like a normal human knows that is a mah value okay so whereas in this when we go for rockets you will definitely not see mah okay because it is milliamp per hour okay milliamp hour batteries whereas in rockets there are uh, amp hour batteries and or even kilo amp hour batteries are there and uh, even there is a, a factor known as c factor i am not sure with the uh, name i just forgot so basically that factor is responsible for how much charge your battery can can uh, give how much charge at at one time itself so like there are these few uh, things which depends upon the battery that we choose but that's the basic thing about the power system we won't go much into depth i know it's going a bit technical which i was not supposed to do this was just an overview let's move ahead now it is the importance of testing okay so why testing is important you all must have seen spacex doing multiple amount of tests okay it had it like it's sn sn10 sn11 everything like in few weeks in few months is continuously like going with the tests okay why is it important first of all like these kind of things are highly funded okay any avionics system requires high high funding okay like especially when it is uh, when the aim is to like send it in space whereas a basic avionics system which is not going in space but still remains in earth's atmosphere itself for such kind of components too the testing is important and uh, basically so whenever the like how to uh, go on with the testing so there are proper procedures given online so for the things which are already been developed so for that you can easily find some uh, good uh, good blogs or which you will find the list of tests that are to be performed but basically in avionics uh, the like the testing is the important part because like just think that you are making a cansat or you are making a cubesat uh, at your home or at in your college you are making so you cannot directly make the whole cancelled or cube set and directly go for a testing you and you may not directly go for a drop test or like launch your whole cube set or cancelled in a hypered rocket okay that won't be the thing like either you could be like highly funded or you could be a very much rich person to do so okay you have to be such such kind of person if if you are going for direct final test so before this there are many small tests that go under which which we don't see like even the companies they they will not put like those small tests in in the videos or even even on their uh, pages because like those tests are very small but are very much important to do so it is like we need to move from step 1 to step 2 step 3 step 4 not directly to step 10 or step 15 okay whereas we only see like on the social media pages of the other companies that is they are directly they show like step 1 to step 50 or to step 100 okay but that's their work but we are talking about uh, like we are just talking about uh, how you could go like if someone is trying anything any of the avionics component they are trying out so basically this is for them that they need to go with the small test so let's basically see in this photo itself you can see there are these multiple things connected okay so rather than directly going for this so each and every component are being test at various points okay and even before the actual physical test virtual tests are are being conducted okay theoretically uh, people uh, like uh, the engineers need to go through like theoretically they need to see whether it, it will work fine or not and there are many online and uh, even softwares are available like which can help help out with uh, like for the circuits or even for the propulsion system and everything there are softwares 
or some or the other way to virtually test it okay later on practically like interfacing one one component at a time and by such simple method uh basic testing and after that basic testing like things could go well like and another important thing in avionics the things that could be tested like by by this system or that could be tested multiple times only such kind of components can be used okay whereas the components which can which can be used only once at a time may not be used in the avionics like a basic parachute ejection system or basic uh, separation system in a rocket like it it takes uh, basically a pyro system is used to sep uh, for the stage separation of a rocket okay and many a times you all must have also heard about the failure of a whole mission because of the stage separation which doesn't occurs properly and because of this like if the stage uh, separation doesn't occurs properly due to the uh, pyro system then the whole mission is gone at that point itself even though your whole module that you have kept is still like working properly uh, so basically why it happens is the pyro system is a system which cannot be tested uh, like uh, multiple times okay once this is the the pyro ignites and it is used at at that time itself you cannot like there won't be the assurance that will work work fine every time okay so such kind of system are not to be used in 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 avionics okay so this was the basic meaning of importance of testing because of which like testing gives you the consistency and reliability which is the most important part in avionics so let's go with the basics now that is here in the image you can see a simple rocket okay which has three important parts that is input the main processing part that is the onboard computer and the output this is it okay so here what we have is a, a input an onboard computer and an output in which the input stand for a basic sensor we can we can call it as an, an input okay even there are various things like uh, the the data that you are getting from the communication system even that could be said as one of the inputs that goes into the onboard computer but still we'll go with the basics so what we have kept is the input is a sensor here so this sensor could be various sensors that is maybe a gyroscope or uh, accelerometer or or a temperature sensor okay so there could be these various sensors that could be there then we have an onboard computer where the all these data will be processed and then finally we have the output so in this by the output what i mean is there could be various outputs that could be available but in rocket what we have is here the output is the thrust vector control for now for just a basic idea what is thrust vector control so in rockets you all must have seen that if the rocket cannot go straight like by simple physics okay it requires some external uh, <clears throat> external uh, force that is required that is provided using this thrust vector controlled uh, mechanism in which what will happen is the thrust that you can see here okay so basically here we can make this vector thing okay so this is where the downward direction the exhaust is coming okay here is your your force the main force that is going upwards direction okay so basically this is thr uh, thrust in which uh, it is going and then vector means having it in a particular direction okay in case your rocket tilts you will require to change the the direction in which your exhaust is coming out okay you you can like here you can see this blue color lines basically it uses uh, pneumatics or basically the hydraulic system to control the thrust of this engine okay so basically the whole engine will move it can it has some limit of freedom in which it can move okay that is it, this system is known as thrust vector controlling and the same system is even in missiles and everything like a missile which can uh, go in in any direction to chase its uh, wherever it is pointed towards okay so this was about the thrust vector controlling which is one of the important component and the output is this 
so hope so this is clear to you that any avionics system requires these three things input the onboard computer which processes your data and the output let's go to the next thing that is now just think that this yellow line is the error angle by which your rocket will tilt now okay now your rocket is going straight okay this is the predefined path and uh, this is your uh, the direction in which your exhaust is coming out okay so just think your rocket has deviated now so this is the deviated path for your rocket this is the error angle so now what will you do to against uh, make your rocket uh, move on the predefined trajectory or the predefined path what you will be doing is basically tilt this whole engine okay the rocket needs to tilt this whole engine in a particular direction what it will do is now the direction is, is this way okay so now what will happen is your rocket will tilt in this direction i'm not sure about the angle for now let's take it, let it be some x angle okay so it will tilt by x angle and then what will happen is like if this exhaust comes out in this direction now it will turn your ro rocket back to its original position okay and this is how your uh, rocket will again uh, correct itself and come to the predefined path first of all how will know this angle we will get to know this angle because of the gyroscopes that are connected into it okay because of the gyroscope we will get to know that this was the error angle that data will be processed so there will be multiple filters going on into this and like in in our phones also we have gyroscopes okay so we get to know that what will be the orientation okay but now just by using the gyroscope we won't know how much the uh, rocket engine has to tilt okay so now just think this is the rocket which is moving this cap is the uh, the engine that it will be moving so just think if your rocket has tilted in this direction what you have to do is your your engine will tilt in this direction and it will state your rocket okay make your rocket straight again and it will go on the predefined path <clears throat> and uh, all the calculations like it requires very much high amount of calculations which goes under this like because the thrust vector controlling moves only few degrees okay it only has around 3 to 7 degrees of freedom it cannot move more than that okay and even if the rocket like it tilts more than 10 or more than that degrees like few set degrees in your rocket like the whole mission needs to be aborted then okay so this was the basic of a rocket system so still we went a bit into depth but in rockets basically this is the system which goes okay so the thrust vector controlling about which we were talking the system input output which is the most important part so now we won't we just uh, like we won't go much into the technical part now we'll just see uh, like for which you are here that is basically the approach to avionics which means how you can start your journey with with this domain okay so what i like ahead uh, i explained was the things which are already available in avionics what all things are there which are which are the basic things that you need to know were explained ahead still all these have a lot much technical details to go but let's see what's ahead okay how you can start with yourself uh, like with the avionics so dream big start small but but most of all is we need to start so basically we cannot make the big rockets or uh, actual satellites or something like that directly still what we can do is we can start small we can understand the logics out of it and we can at least start with such things okay and that's what something even we did at star we learned these things and now we are even teaching these things to students and still we are uh, advancing our own knowledge as well so here you can see on the left hand side we have a satellite which is a proper satellite which which can be deployed in space definitely a student or a person sitting at home cannot make this it requires a lot of funding a lot of licensing paperwork tons of thing a whole big company lot many things are required but what we can do is we can start small we can start small with a cansat you can start small with a cube set or with a model rocket or you can build a, a onboard computer for a high powered rocket 
so these things can be tried out by a by a student and in this now we'll see like how you can basically try out doing this okay and what are the similarities which will stay there okay so in this what you can see here we have a communication system then we have a power system attached it will be having few sensors which will be here okay which for which it is sent okay the satellite is sent above so the same thing can be added here on the top here you can see it is a there is a communication module here there is one onboard computer which will, which can process data on this on this layer you can see there are various components the sensors are attached and this is the power system where the battery is attached okay so you can see the similarities still the there is a lot much difference but for a beginner they can at least start with these things okay and now in market like if someone wants to go into avionics it's not at all like uh, they need to go into a deep research with a particular topic itself okay so there are uh, components available okay there are many sensors available you just need to understand its interfacing how it actually works and just need to try out uh, like
Okay. Okay. Yeah, sorry for the inconvenience. I just had an issue with my Wi-Fi. So yeah, hope so my screen is visible. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So here we were, we were talking about the basic similarities between what a big thing is and like how you can start small out of it so basically this is what uh, like the major point of this whole session was that is how you can start small with what you have okay what you have in your surrounding so let's see ahead now that is on the left hand side you can see the onboard computers which are there and these onboard computers are basically the like the one which you can see they are gold and lead coated okay the ones that you can see so these components so what what they are usually made like in such a way that they have these simple electronic components it's in inside it but still like the radiation hardening part that we talk we had a talk in the start itself it's it's about it okay so it's like totally covered and radiation hardening has gone has been done over this and on the right hand side are also the uh, electronic device which you all must have seen in your uh, daily life and even in the like in your colleges you all must have seen so these components are basically the raspberry pi the arduino and the node mcu like these can be used as an onboard computer where what will happen is you can connect your sensors to all these onboard computers and these sensors uh, sorry these onboard computers like they can work as an onboard computer and they can process your your whole data and then they can even perform the uh, the output for you okay the same thing the whole the uh, cancer cube set that you saw that you can see here uh, like can be easily made using these basic onboard computers okay so this is how you can start small and in this on the right hand side the components that you can see these are the very basic component uh, which are used by a beginner whereas what what happens is like when a person is uh, like who wants to try out these things but what happens is like when they are trying out things like the thrust vector controlling or or some uh, like getting a lot much of uh, high amount of data from some something like uh, a cube set or a can set at such time it requires very much high amount of processing speed and such high amount of processing speed cannot be achieved by these things okay so there are still in the normal market there are other components which are available which can provide you us uh, such a precision and high data processing rate okay which are there which can be used so this was about the uh, basic components uh, onboard computer uh, components that can be used and then we have the uh, basic antenna that you can see on the left hand side okay it, so in this basic antenna like this is how it looks like but like in the in the small smaller section that we can see on the right hand side we have the zigbee module we have nrf module there are various radio frequency modules available so all these modules are very much easy to use if you just want to try all these things like just think like all the things which i have kept on the right hand side okay like you can easily find the libraries for it you can easily find tons of projects like people have done many students have worked a lot on these things and uh, this this is very much easily available very much easy to interface the main thing is that you understand the logic okay the logic behind it's working that how the data comes how we process the data how you remove the noise from it how you add the filters the process remains the logic remains the same okay 
and it's only the difference that some th that one thing is being used for a, at large scale one thing is used as at a at a smaller scale okay so these were the major things so if someone wants they can start working on all these things okay as it says dream big start small but you need to start with it okay that's the main thing so that's it for the for today so this was it about the basic approach to avionics where a person who is not from the avionics background must have got a bit idea of what avionics is and what all things uh, it it could have and then how they can start with with other things that is with the basic component that are available in market so this is it from my side thank you so much and thank you wings of aero for giving me this chance and sorry for the inconvenience that i had due to my bad internet connection thank you guys thank you mr harish uh, patel for sharing your knowledge if anyone have doubt let us Hello? doubts doubts with this ah yes in the message box Harsh Patel, hello. Yeah, hello. Am I audible? Ah, ah, yes, audible. Ah, uh, I think one question in the chat box. Someone asking. Okay, someone is asking about how the ionosphere 